The last part of acoustic amends that we're going to talk about is the acoustic reflex. So you have two small muscles that are involved in the operations of the middle ear bones, the tensor tympani and the stapedius muscle. These muscles contract in response to intense sounds and it's a reflex, so it doesn't last, you have no control over it. So just as if I were to throw a ball at your face, you'd blink and you'd back away. Um, the same thing, I clap a loud sound next to your ear, your stapedius muscle, your tensor tympani, they contract and they pull the tympanic membrane inward and upward. So it occurs in normal hearing people between 85 and 100 dBSPL. So the immense meter, the same machine that did the tympanometry, also does the acoustic reflex. And it can be done ipsilaterally or contralaterally. So I could send a tone in my left ear and measure the response in my left ear, the reflex response, or I could send the tone in my left ear and I can measure the reflex response in my right ear. That would be a contralateral um, measurement. What's great about doing the contralateral measurement is that I can send the sound in one side and double check that all these systems are working to carry it over to the other side. So as you see the auditory pathways, there's a lot of processing and sharing and reprocessing and sharing from the cochlea all the way up to the auditory cortex. So this reflex has a contralateral pathway where I could send the sound in one ear and measure the response in the other ear. And that's a more valuable test because I get to see what's happening a little bit more inside. So the reflex activating signal is the signal used to produce the, cochlear, the acoustic reflex. It could be a pure tone, um, a broader noise band. It's usually started at 70 dB HL. If there's no reflex seen at 70 dB HL, it's raised in 10 dB steps until the machine maxes out at 115 dB. If you see it, you could do, if you get the, ten, the response, then you can do 5 dB steps down looking for a threshold. So when we're measuring the acoustic reflex threshold, we're sending in a loud sound, we're looking for a contraction in the tympanic membrane. If we don't see that contraction, we start to go up in 10 dB steps. Once we see it, we go down in 5 dB steps. So it's a threshold. Measurements are taken at 500, 1,000, 2,000, 4,000 hertz in each ear. You send the sound in and you look for the reflex. To see the reflex, um, it comes out as a little dip on the tympanometer on the machine. And if you want to be sure that you've actually found a reflex, if it starts as a small dip, and you raise up your stimulus level, the dip will get even greater. Patients need to be silent during this test because noise interferes with the measurements. Any vocalizations will interfere with your measurements. This is true of tympanometry, the other tests that we spoke about. You need to be quiet. The child needs to be quiet and sitting still because any movement or noise is going to get confused as a response. Reflexes are seen at normal levels, about 85 dB for people with normal hearing. Reflexes could be absent. That would be indicative, indicative of a hearing loss. Reflexes could be low, present but at low levels. That's not very common. Or reflexes could be present but at, again at a high sensation level reflecting a hearing loss but maybe not as severe as a hearing loss as a person who has no reflexes at all. So if the medullar muscle reflex is present at 85 dB, then the person likely has normal hearing. If it's um, absent or only active at very high intensity levels, that's reflected of a hearing loss. It could also be a conductive hearing loss too. It doesn't have to necessarily be a sensory neural hearing loss. The reflex could also be absent if there's damage to the eighth auditory nerve. So these are objective tests, and we're going to use this test along with autoacoustic emissions and ABRs, which we'll talk about in the next chapter, and our pure tone audiometry and our speech audiometry to put everything all together.